Good morning and welcome to Craddock Golf Club. It's just outside Brecon, so I have got this view for company all day. Tees of the day are just under 6,000 yards, it's a par 71 and it is tree lined and a bit tight. Sounds very much like last week, except we've got the wind. So where I normally say let the width of the hole determine what your tee club is, rather than the length. It may well be that today we've got to do a modified version of that. If we're into the wind we may just have to hit driver when we don't want to hit driver but that gives me the excuse to come back when it's sunny, not windy and play it again. I mean look at this, this is fantastic and I haven't even teed off. Well here we go down the first and against my better judgment I'm taking driver into the breeze today and a little bit off the left. Perhaps I should have just stuck with the three wood and put up with being a little bit further away. Got a shot but um, I can't reach the green. So it's about hitting the club I can hit well and not worry about the green. You know sometimes you just can't reach especially into the breeze now a lot of the greens are like this the, the course is on the side slope of a hill so the green is high on one side and low on the other plenty of runoff and a poor chip one of the joys of playing on your own is you don't get to observe anybody else playing a shot before you so you kind of like learn things the hard way. You know one of the most important things to do when you come to a golf course for the first time is look around. So behind you there is the 17th green, I've seen where the flag is, where the bunkers are. On the first tee I had a look at the second hole because we're going back to the clubhouse now and there's a ditch across well short of the green. So depending on my drive I'm either hitting uh, an iron second shot or perhaps a wooden going for the green. It all depends how well I hit this thing. So there's another fairway over here. So you've got to be looking. You've got to look everywhere on your first visit and then on your second visit you'll do a little better than your first. Par 5 second and certainly wide enough for driver so let's do it. That's dragged a little left. I've hit one of the trees on the left and it's spat it out sideways on a very short drive under 200. I don't think that the ditch is going to be an issue even from this far out. So if I can hit a high five wood, um, a high five wood, then that would easily carry. Now I don't know what it is about the wind but it can also mess up your short game as well as your long game. As I said on the first hole, without being able to observe anybody playing, you can't always tell what the bounce is going to be, what the rollout is going to be. So as I say, when I play on my own, I learn about the greens the hard way. But that's good enough for a par. The bogey on the first is forgotten we can move on. The third is a very short par 3 over water. You can't see the surface of the green but you've got to trust the yardage. As it happens I'm right on the front here so it's under a hundred yards today. And This is what the rest of the tee looks like. Nice stone wall, nice planting. It really is very pretty here. All the areas between the tee and the green, that, uh, or the green and the next tee, that you walk through, they're all very nicely planted. Off to the next, dogleg right and up the hill. There's a bunker down the left, so even though this is into the wind, I'm hitting the three wood as I should have done on the first. Don't worry, the jumper goes back on very quickly. 
The green is low on the left, high on the right. This is a five iron fade into the bank of the green. So we can use that bank on the right as a little bit of extra green to bring the ball back to the green and not risk missing left and down the bank. So that is a very, very smart shot. first part five and as straight as you like and my camera's doing the dark thing again I think I fixed it just in the same way as I've fixed the driving perhaps I've loosened up a little bit more now and there is a green up there when we come back just a seven iron leave it short of those fairway bunkers that squirted out to the right that was a bit weird and just get to the left edge of the green here didn't get all of it this rough is quite interesting it's not very long but the ball kind of sits in it now, I've been asked about playing out of bunkers well first you need plenty of space to do so then you stand very wide as wide as you can and you scooch down you get as low as you can Look how open that face is, that blade is almost flat. Then you take a big swipe at it. And you're looking for a shallow contact with the sand. You don't want to be hitting down like a chip or a pitch. And then we can make a par. Right, I found a spot that's more or less out of the wind. First impressions, well, tees, fairways. Greens are superb. The bunkers have got sand in, as we just found out. There's no way I could play that shot on some of the golf courses. They're just, just that very thin veneer of sand over clay, aren't they? As you've seen, under the trees, there isn't a lot of rough. You don't need it. The trees are the hazard, so you don't need to grow three inches of rough under the trees to give you problems. Although this short rough just did give me problems. I had two lies where it was sat down. That first one I think was sat in semi in an old divot and that's why it kept squirted out sideways instead of forwards. This is, this is wonderful. I can't wait to come back on a sunny day, take the jumper off. It is July, but you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, get the jumper off, play without wind, and really enjoy it. Not that I'm not enjoying it. This is wonderful. I can't believe I'm actually making pars, to be honest. Next hole. A long par four, but it is down the wind. I am going to take driver because there is enough space for it out there on the left. And then it will run down the fairway. But I didn't start it left. I started it in the middle. And we run off the fairway. Wouldn't this be glorious on a sunny day? 167 iron, this is just a guess. That beautiful house is in the background again. And we go through the green into this kind of like slit trench of a bunker. There's a few on this course, so it is possible to get poor lies in it with it being not very deep front to back but I guess they don't want golf balls in their garden and an unlikely par <laughs> short par 3 down the shaft of a 7 iron flight it down the way you flight it down is quite simply to stay over the ball don't come up out of the shot and that keeps the height off the shot. And another slit trench of a bunker there on the right, so I'm grateful to avoid that. Putting a little better now. 
sun's just appeared for a moment. Do you know what? The, the attention to detail here, all the little bits and pieces, all the, the extra presentation, it means that this is not a good golf course. This is a great golf course. Bear in mind, I only paid £25 green fee this afternoon. Tell you one thing, I'm going to start looking like a bacon roll if I keep having bacon rolls in the clubhouse before I play. Look at that! I'd better turn you around. This hole is really narrow and there's water down there, so I'm guessing at a seven. I've hit a decent seven down the left, that will come back off the bank a little bit. I'm grateful I didn't take a six. I can barely get at this flag past the tree. So perhaps being a little further back would have helped. I was expecting the wind to fly that and it just didn't, so we're a long way away. Putting back up the hill. And one of those. Dog leg right, I'm going with three wood over the trees. If I can get this high enough, the wind is going to carry it. I don't need the driver. Ah, oh well, perhaps I do need the driver. I've clunked a tree and it also spat it off to the right. So a little recovery shot required. And then we can wedge it on, try and go for our par. Toilets behind the green and a lovely flower bed down there too, although I don't show it on camera. It just wasn't time. But there's something got a bit strong in my grip, I think, because I'm hitting far too many pulls when I shouldn't be. Nine holes done. Time to change the battery in the camera. And then we go uphill on ten. There's a ditch across. So even though it's short, it's going to play longer than its length, and I wanted to get over the ditch. And it was the right choice, because it leaves me on the same level-ish as the green. As you can see, another raised green with drop-offs. Drop so you've, you've got to be favouring the good side. And just to show how steep it is, there's the ditch. And the T well down. I could really use a birdie now. Dog leg right and downhill. And it's lost ball on the right on this hole, so you do need a straight one. I didn't know what it takes, so I took hybrid. I hit it decently enough. No complaints. Except for I've finished in kind of like no man's land on this very, very steep downslope. This is not the best place to be. I think next time, oh, another tug, tugged it left. I think next time I might take three wood and just get well down the hill, but then I might be left with a 40 yarder, which is most definitely no man's land. I'd probably have to play it three or four times to figure out what the correct choice is. Par three next. And look at the view on this. This would be glorious in blue sunshine as opposed to just ordinary wonderful. Knock down eight into the wind. That is plenty. Again, the walk here from this green to the next tee is just a selection of beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers. It's an absolute pleasure, this golf course. I'm taking driver up the hill because I'm driving it very well, so why not? You can turn away from it. Oh my word! And from the centre of the fairway, I ran off about 35 yards. So I think next time, without wind, I'd probably hit just a 5 wood.
Well, that's short. I think the wind tires you out in the end. It just keeps punishing you shot after shot and you lose energy. Another beautiful drive. Surprise how well I'm driving it today down these narrow alleys between the trees. And here's the kind of stupid thing when your mind switches off. I'm going to try and hook a three wood. Well, I hit it lovely, but straight. Little nine iron. Under the tree, bounce it down. Is it going to appear? It's on the green, it's off the green. So we come down one of these little runoffs. They aren't really that challenging. You know, it's just a little flick with a sand wedge. So if you keep your head about you, up and down isn't particularly difficult. Well, as I'm driving it well, off with the driver again. And that is straight over the stick in the middle of the fairway. But it was too much club. So we're left with a chip out. And this is all you can do sometimes, is just chip out the trees and get it back into play. And try not to do anything fancy with it. you got 48 yards, get it up and down. Wind's carried that a little bit. Of course, downwind, you, you don't stop. It takes the spin off the ball and it just releases. Wish my putt had released. Dog leg right. But the core of the dog leg isn't that far away, so you can, if you hit your driver high enough, sneak over it. 5-iron into the wind. That's just sail through it like the wind isn't even there. And I'm off the back of the green. Poor lie. Chances of getting this up and down are rather slim. Not surprised by that at all. And the wind is not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing as well. And it just kind of like drains you and you start making mistakes and the score starts adding up and it, it's all sort of like out of control that's golf 17th tee i'll say goodbye here because the wind is uh, behind the microphone so it might not sound too bad i'd like to come back when it's not windy then i wouldn't be forced to take driver everywhere i gotta hit a lot of more three woods and i i probably would anyway even in this wind now that I've seen the course what I haven't been able to show you is all the planting in the dead areas you know from the the walk from the green to the next tee it's just delightful and well planned trees shrubs flowers it, it's gorgeous out here honestly you really need to pay it a visit especially an afternoon tea time where it's only 25 pounds midweek I mean snap their arm off for that kind of money I'm over my handicap, I don't know how much, but it's not surprising on a day like today. So even downwind you don't gain anything, you know, I've got a par 3 here and I don't know how I'm going to stop the ball when there's three clubs of wind behind me. But it's been a great deal of fun and I can't wait to come back. Cheerio! Well I've managed to talk myself into a 7-iron here because I just want to get somewhere near the front edge and chip from there. And then I've struck it poorly and the wind hasn't carried it and left myself a, a 40 yarder into the green. Bit of a lazy sand wedge. Again it releases and another bogey. And it's just lack of thought, lack of concentration, just being worn down by the wind. So we dash off to the last, going to do something sensible and just hit the three wood. Ta-ra!